the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Okay, well, good good afternoon now. I was sitting there, I, I was uh, I was recording this morning, but didn't have the audio working. At least when I tried to do my editing, I didn't have audio working. So um, now I'm doing that. So this is uh, going live again. And, and we, we talked about this morning was the uh, Black History Month. Uh, since this is February, the Black History Month, I figure why not do a session dealing with Black History Month uh, using the Bible. Uh, and, the, and the title basically is, uh, does skin, skin color matters? And the answer is no. But it matters to people, but it doesn't matter to God. I guess that better with the best way I put that down is, does it matter to God? Skin color. And I bet you everybody knows whether you are uh, a nationalist or supremacist or, or black supremacist or anything that think they're supreme or something, knows that in the eyes of God, color doesn't matter. And that's what's important for us as believers in Christ is to know that color does not matter. So let's get into this study and let's get into the word uh, and some of the factual information that, that help us appreciate the, the creation of God, which is us. We, we and also all, all nature, the world, uh, the animals, the flowers, all the things. That's God. God made colors. <laughs> and, and, and guess what? We, he created us in his image. And in his image, he gave us a body and he masterfully put color on everybody. Everybody got different shades of colors. I know some people want to have just one shade of color. And saying, and that's all the color that's supposed to be there. You know, that's 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 like taking an artist's work, and you and you you you're extracting the masterpiece of what God has done for mankind. We got us tall, we got short, we got fat, we got skinny, we got medium size, we got medium height, we got short height. You know, you got all those things. That's the masterpiece of God. Just like when you take a flower, look at the colors of the flower and the glory of it, or the trees or the forest or the ocean, it's all colorful. Well, why would we want to even restrict or even abuse the masterpiece? <laughs> oh man, it's good, great. I think you'll love this study and then being to send it out uh, this time, knowing that we have audio. <laughs> but this is a live stream now. If you, you get notice and you want to come up and listen, great. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to get into this study. And I tell you, man, look out what God is going to do. I, I did this morning talking to myself. And I was sitting there covering the subject. And, and even I was uh, really impressed with what how God can do teach a study like this in love. Where it's not, to me, it shouldn't offend anybody. Um, because all we're talking about is just scripture. We study the Bible. The Bible says, study and show yourself approved unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then to just appreciate, that's, that's the good news about the gospel, is to appreciate all of us. I know some of us want to sit there, especially when we talk about systemic racism and stuff, um, demonize people to give you permission to operate outside the fruit of the spirit, which is what you're supposed to do. That everybody, everybody as a believer is operate under the fruits of the Spirit. And we don't need evil darkness to to do things that we don't, we shouldn't want anybody to do. We should advocate uh, treating everybody with love and respect, you know. Uh, and, and that can even goes from abortion and so forth too. Respect life in the womb. Respect life outside the womb. Respect the, respect the life cycle of a human being's life all the way. No difference. And for, stop trying to demonize people 
and, and chronize people just for the color of the skin. Now you, 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 I know you know better, but you do it. Some of us do it anyway. Anyway, the, this topic is called teaching the gospel Yeshua's way. Now Yeshua, just for some of you don't know what Yeshua means, it is the name of Jesus Christ in the Hebrew language. If you didn't know that, because some of you probably didn't know. Look it up. It's the Hebrew name of Jesus Christ in Hebrew. When he walked this earth, Yeshua is a common name. Another English translation is Joshua. Uh, but guarantee you, when 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 you if you were a Hebrew or you was in Israel at the time and you saw Jesus walking by, you would say Yeshua. And he'd turn around. And guess what? Not only he would turn around, maybe anybody else in that crowd, the name Yeshua would turn around too. It means salvation, savior. But that was a prophecy when it gave people names. It was just speaking to their life. In this case, God, the angels gave Mary the name, said so you will call him Yeshua. That's what the Hebrew name would have been at that time or is today. <laughs> so that's what we said, talk about teaching Yeshua's way. And the fact is that Jesus, Yeshua said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So if nobody comes to the Father but by his way, then I think we should always teach his way. Amen? God bless you. All right. What are we talking about? Since this is February, the month of February, we're talking about Black History Month. Then what are we talking about? Let's talk about Black History Month using the Bible. It, I think everybody can accept that that's reasonable to just teach the good news, the gospel, the reason of service, teaching it God's way. Amen? So that's what we're doing. That's what I'm trying to do today. Excuse me, I'm sitting there trying to get my YouTube thing up working on my other computer. Excuse me, sorry. Okay, uh, and I'm trying to make sure, like, when I'm trying to get to the point where I can do the, the videos and at the same time be able to um, watch when when a live uh, session comes up and I still have not mastered that yet but we'll get to it sooner or later man <laughs> all right matter of fact I think I'm gonna go over to homes over here and see what happens see if it pops up there okay but anyway the the teaching the gospel Yeshua's way black history month using the bible and the question the underlying question is does skin color matters to god i know it matters to people because some people just they, they've been taught and we're talking man when you're talking about the the uh especially the things that divided us in this country for so long and the thing that divided the world up for so long uh it it we were taught generation to generation to let color matter but what we want to be able to show and demonstrate that it doesn't matter to God at all. And I think all of us know that. We, we just want to do that as to get an edge on one group of people or individual. Because uh, I've seen throughout history where uh, there's been, you know, like this, let's say crime first. Because if I had a tendency to try to label somebody based on the color of skin by, by color skin call them criminals well <laughs> you got white on white crime black on black crime native american native american crime you got everybody has crime toward their fellow peers or their ethnic group you know you you got people that fought each other regardless of the color of the skin i mean what's going on in 2023 you got russia and you got ukraine they, they all have the same color of skin. I mean, do you agree with that? They, they all have the same color of skin. So conflict won't stop. At this point, some of y'all think conflict won't stop just because people have different colors of skin. We, we even Rome and, 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 and Europe had fat, uh, battles against each other. They didn't, it wasn't a matter of the color of skin. It was just a matter of different ethnic groups, different tribes, different countries and nations or whatever. They fought against each other. Uh, Africa, people fought against each other in Africa. People fought against each other in China. People fought themselves against them in Russia. People fought against themselves all over the world. So one of the things we need to make sure we appreciate the fact is that it's not color that drives the train, nor should it be something that, that causes us to 
discriminate against one another, hate one another because of the different color of skin. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, that's what we are. And I, and I was putting out the fact we are a masterpiece. God created all of us, right? And the fact is that just like nature does in the world, he created all the things, all the beauty of nature with color. You know, we don't live in one color, one monotone. We live in color. That's it, gets, it makes it pretty. It makes it beautiful. You know, you got a blue shirt on me, right? In the background, you got red in there. You got black in this. That's just, that's just, well, who wants to be so boring to think that one color of, of what was made in the image of God should, should have one color. That's, does that make sense? Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that if you had it, that you wouldn't fight each other. That doesn't make sense either because that people are fighting each other because of color. People are having crimes against each other even when they have the same color. So let's let's learn to do what God wants us to do and appreciate the creation of God and the fact that being we made the image of God and He gave the beautiful masterpiece of different shades of color. This beautiful uh, African American or oh, skin color, black color, you want to call it, brown color, or or, or, or white color, or Anglo Saxon color, or Hispanic colors and Jewish colors. It's all those pretty different colors that makes us beautiful people. So let's learn to appreciate the beauty that we have for one another and say, look what God did. Look at the shade of color God made that person. That person is beautiful. Look at that brown color. That's beautiful. Look at that white color or, or salmon color. That's beautiful. Appreciate what God is doing as opposed to trying to find ways to, to get a status that has no value, especially in the eyes of God. Okay, so the bottom line is that's what I say. It doesn't matter, all right? And uh, one of the sessions we're talking about is, when we always do our sessions, we should always deal with the Lord's Prayer. And in the Lord's Prayer, uh, we're going to go here real quick. It says in Matthew 6, chapter, I mean, starting in verse 9, you're talking about, after this manner, therefore pray. He, he said, you don't have to do this verbatim, but use this manner of prayer when you pray. You sit there and say, our Father, I like that part because we're talking that you are, If this is a reminder prayer, how I call the Lord's Prayer. And the main thing is that you are a child of God. That's a reminder. Every time you do the Lord's Prayer, you're saying, I'm a child of God. Because I was made in the image of God. I'm a child of God. Now, you don't want to be a child of God, that's up to you. And if you want to sit there and try to restrict who's a child of God, that ain't up to you. <laughs> I like that too. It ain't up to you. It's up to God. Now, there's some people that uh, choose not to be a child of God and want to be adopted by the devil, so they're children of the devil. But they made that choice. You didn't make that choice. They made that choice. But for those of us who have decided to be a child of God, we make that choice freely. And look, we don't make it based on the color of our skin. <laughs> this is the case, this is Black History Month, make sure you know, this is not being a child of God based on the color of your skin. That is just, that's just one, like I said, that's the masterpiece of God, your color. But your choice is a free will choice to be a child of God. You was created in the image of God. Man made a mistake and disconnected, had to be born again. Christ had to be born again. So did you become a child of God. So you're a child of God. I, by faith, I, I'm accept that you're a child of God. If not, you can be a child of God. Just come to him. But the bottom line is that our father, that means a parental, a personal relationship, an intimate relationship between a child and his father, our father, God the father is our uh, parents, amen, which are in heaven. And it's very clear that I'm not a child of a political party. I'm not a child of a particular nation. I'm not a child of a particular color. I'm a child of God in heaven. I'm pointing toward heaven. The devil can't get up there. He got kicked out, so he ain't up there no more, amen? So I'm talking about God in heaven, the Father in heaven, amen? Hallowed be thy name, meaning worship and glorify him. We're here to praise him. We're here to glorify him. We're not here to glorify ourselves. We're here to glorify him, amen? 
Uh, so that's what the hollow be that name. Look, that kingdom come. We're talking about the fact is that we're in this world, we're not of this world, those of us who receive Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And the fact is that his kingdom has a way of operating. Just like our government has a way of operating, his kingdom has a, a way of operating. And the big piece of that is every kingdom has a king. And our king is God, amen? <laughs> That's a blessing by itself, ain't it? God is our king. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There's many people that don't think that when follows the, uh, our belief system that we're focusing on the, on the by and by. No, he said, thy will, which is his word, which he left us, amen, uh, will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So what we're looking in fact is that we want the will that is in heaven to be in earth with us and in us amen that's a blessing i'm telling you you want to be uh have the heaven you want to have the same will the, his word what his word applies in heaven you want that word applied to you here in earth that's what that means and it's his word the will is his word give us this day i love this because it's just the day is gone tomorrow is not promised and sufficient on today is the evening thereof anyway. So we want to have give us this day. Praise God. Right? Like my mom said, you wake up this morning, you got another day. You know, yesterday is gone, but you got another day. And take that day and stand on that day. Amen. Uh, our and give us our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread, meaning give us his, his word. You want his word so that you so he can stand strong in the power of God, his word, his will. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, which is the word of God. You want substance, but you also need the word. And that's why I want to make sure you understand this path was all about focus on the word, study the word for yourself. Because you got a lot of people sitting there trying to interpret the word, miss word, the word, on wrong, right? They divide the word of God you learn to divide that word of God rightly to apply to your life. Don't try to try and apply it to somebody else's life. That's your job. Your job is to let people understand what the word of God is and how it means, what it means to you and how it applies in your, applies in your life. He said, and forgive us our debts if we forgive our debt towards the same way you want to be forgiven, you want to forgive others. You forgive others the same way you want to be forgiven. That is the way the kingdom operates but give and you shall be forgiven hey in, when i get to 15 you'll sit there and say if you don't forgive then he can't forgive you he just won't because he said i, I die for all of you i know some people don't want to believe that but that's something i don't care about that let's go what the word says if you forgive then he will forgive you if you don't want to forgive then he's not to forgive you and we're going to talk about some scriptures saying, what, what profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? For what? For unforgiveness? Give me a break. And he said, and lead us not into temptation. Meaning, don't, asking God, said, don't take me down a road that's going to cause me to stumble or fall. But I do want you to know that temptation does occur. It does occur. Christ was tempted in the wilderness. He was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted. And then what you understand is that no temptation, which such as common to man, is, is it's not something that you can't overcome. In other words, he won't test you if you can't overcome it. So just understand that. If you, you put in a situation where you are tested to the point that you know you're not going to pass that test, that wasn't God that did that. No. That, that, that's, that's, that's the enemy, the spirit of warfare that you deal with. But if God put you in a test, you can pass that test because he is our ultimate teacher. And deliver us from evil. We know we want to do that because there's a, there's a, the Bible says sufficient today is the evil thereof. And we don't know. You don't know if you're going to a Walmart one day or Target one day uh, or a school, <laughs> post office, an office. And somebody said they want to go and just start shooting people. You want to be able to sit there and say, Lord, deliver me from evil. Amen. Uh, and closing up, he said, for thine is the kingdom. Meaning, once again, my kingdom and my kingdom. 
you you deliver from me my kingdom my will is done in your life and you want us to then continue to stay in that kingdom so thine is the kingdom and his power is the ultimate power even if people just sit there and grab the guns and all this stuff they, they have limited power and they know that that was some of them actually kill themselves and then some of them actually get killed. But the bottom line is that's that that's limited power. We're talking about the ultimate power, which is God Himself. So just remember that. And the glory once again goes to Him. Stop trying to glorify yourself. Stop trying to glorify your political party. Stop trying to glorify uh, anything above God. You want to glorify God. And that's what He wants you to do. And forever, amen. Because then we talk about eternity, we're talking about eternal. Uh, praising, eternal, glorifying of God the Father. And, you know, you, I don't want to be eternal glorifying you, and you don't want to eternally glorify me. We definitely want to get to eternally glorify the devil, and we're not going to glorify no political body. <laughs> because those things are all temporary. You want to focus on that which is eternal. Amen? And don't forget the fact there's a 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, you have to follow us to forgive you. 15, but if you give me not the trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's what Christ has tell, told us, and that's what you need to understand. Forgiveness is for you, not for the person. It's for you. You you, you forgive that person for you. Amen? Because you want your forgiveness. You want God to, to, to he sent his son to redeem us, and you want to respect that by forgiving just like he did on the cross. He did it, I mean, he was on the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. We need to understand when people do things to us, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> if they knew what they're doing, they wouldn't do it. If they knew they were going against the child of God, they wouldn't do it, but they did it. And they do it, but forgive them, just like Christ did. Amen, I mean, he gave you an example. And you know, First Timothy, which is a theme for this year, is in First Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's what we focus on, coming to the knowledge of the truth by getting into the Word of God and, and, and learning the Word of God. And let me tell you something before I go to the next slide. Stop trying to put a, a bar on any of us because all of us have weaknesses and shortfalls, can make mistakes. I, I don't know who's perfect because I'm not. I know you're not perfect. I know you're not perfect. You can sit there and tell me all day long you're perfect, but you're not. Get together, but you don't. Because you always make mistakes. We, we all, that's that's part of human nature, you know, to, to be able to uh, live. And part of living is to, to, uh, is to recognize the, the challenges of life. Amen. That's 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 all we can do. It's just all we remember that. Okay. Now let's go into uh, the study here, and let's get into this real quick. I think you'll love it. First of all, like I said, we're all children of God. We all talk about Black History Month, but we need to understand that all of us are the masterpiece of God. I love that. I love saying that the masterpiece of God. And it says there, let me come off. It's like, I want to, I want to show you to my face. I am a masterpiece of God. You are a masterpiece of God. Your color of skin is a masterpiece of God. Look how he did it, man. You, you're talking about all the different shades out here from, from, from brown to black to white to to all those main colors out there, right? And the fact is, he did that as a masterpiece. Just like he did it with the different animals out there, the masterpiece. You got a black bear, you got a brown, you got a, a brown bear, you got you got a grizzly bear, you got a, you got a polar bear. Huh? Look at color. You got a dog got different colors. The birds got different colors. Peacock, oh Lord, look at that glorifying that pe peacock. You're talking about trees and the nature and everything. That's the masterpiece of God. You are a masterpiece of God. You are marvelously and wonderful made. So you need to appreciate that and appreciate everybody else. I know you're sitting there thinking that you don't both appreciate everybody else for your survival, but you need to trust in God 
and, and focus on what his blessings is for you. And nobody can take your blessings away if you trust in him. Amen. Come on, man. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.